Okay, howdy folks, we've got a late night game going on, a little bit of short notice, but that's okay. So, um, actually I shouldn't say that, uh, Mitch gave me some heads up, but I wasn't sure if it would be free tonight, and I am, so let's get a, you know, late night game stream going on here. So we're playing, um, here we stand, uh, for the record, I've been generating the missions through a uh, random dice generator, random number generator, so... You know, I think all my missions are fair game. I actually really like this mission. Uh, I think that it adds in the little layer of complexity, which I appreciate. I like the fact that um, the NCUs can do something different, aside from just taking zones on the tactics board. Um, but there's a lot of math and a lot of thinking, so I do understand why some people don't like it as much. So we've got uh, Airship Engineer uh, with his neutrals. And uh, let's get a quick look here. Looks like we've got Brawn in Stormcrows. I love this combination. It's a very, very shooty option. Um, looks like we've got Commander Dario, also in Stormcrow Archers, and Double Hedge Knights. So, do a quick count. Um, this is 21 plus 6 is 27 points, which means he probably has a 5 point NCU. And there he is, Varus. Now, these NCUs are pretty much the best ones you can take. You take Peter for the extra shots with Stormcrows, you take Tech over the heel, and Varus is a very powerful piece, just a bit pricey at fives, not an auto-include, but definitely very powerful. Is he with five points? You know, maybe a bit debatable. And on Mitch's side, we've got super shooty Night's Watch. We've got double crossbow watch captain, uh, conscripts with a watch recruiter for the extra heal, We've got Jon Snow leading Hunters, and we've got two NCUs, Amon and Peter Baelish. Peter for the extra shot, and um, Amon for the heals. Terrain-wise, looks like we've got two Corpse Piles, a Stake, and I don't really see a fourth piece. They must be on top of it. Um, so this is a very aggressive deployment. Um, because Airship Engineer is on the line, the crossbows are also in the line where they can shoot. Um, it's going to be a tough game for neutrals. It's kind of understood that neutrals, you know, and, and Baratheons are kind of struggling to find a place. Neutrals more so because anyone except free folk can borrow all their best options. Um, and is there enough of a reason to play straight neutrals when you can also even take their commanders? Most people would argue no. You know, the deck is the only unique feature, really, and it doesn't seem to be strong enough. So uh, it looks like Mitch is going first, and he's going for the aggressive play, which is, you know, putting Peter onto the bag to deny healing and using the um, sword instead. Look, he's going to shoot into the Hedge Knights. Now, this is going to be either amazing or terrible, because I believe... Um, Engineer's reaction is probably going to be to charge, but when you charge crossbows, they stand and shoot again. Um, so, not a good roll for Mitch on this first volley. Well. Only three hits. Um, now, these guys have four plus saves, but with Sunning becomes a five plus. He makes two, though. Very promising start. Very interesting. Hey, it's Wee. <laughs> How's it going, Wee? <laughs> uh, Bebop and Rush. Sure it is. Sure is. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit of a impromptu one. Okay, so panic test goes down, and I believe that is a fail, especially with the corpse file. Takes one extra wound, but all things considered, he really took quite minimal damage there. So that was really as gentle as it goes. So I'm really curious now if um, if airship engineer is going to go for the uh, go for the charge or take a zone. And he, I guess, because he took very little damage, he's actually going for. Uh, a zone. He's grabbing some cards and, um, sorry, he's using um, Peter and he's going to use it for the sword also to get a shot with Braun. Very interesting. So he's trying to engage Night's Watch in a shooting match. So um, he owns the envelope, which means that he will make this unit vulnerable and he's already in range. He doesn't really need to shift up much more. Um, these units are going to shoot twice more each. Mitch might very well shift his attention to the archers and just blow them up because they have bad armor and not great morale near the corpse pile. So we're seeing seven shots come out, hitting on fours, and uh, decent roll, four hits. Uh, no summary, but this unit should be vulnerable because uh, Airship Engineer 
Oh, he did re-roll. He popped his Peter. He popped his Peter to control the swords. So he gets to re-roll his hits. He understands that this round is actually very decisive. If he can kill the crossbows this game, this round, um, he's, it's going to take him very, very far. Plus, the Hedge Knights will also deal out vulnerable tokens by controlling the sword too. So you got four hits. This Sorry, six hits. This unit should... Now, he's taking away the rerolls, and I can see what's happening here. Maybe he meant to control the um, bag, which would give him Sundering. Now, he is vulnerable. The vulnerable token goes down. So, yeah, I think he meant to control the bag instead of getting Sundering. Statistically, the sword is actually best. The sword gives you the best odds to cause damage. So we got four wounds going on the crossbows with the Sundering. They're going down to a 6 plus save. And we see all fail. Now, does Mitch have the shield to block some damage? Now, the problem is that even if he doesn't have the shield, Mitch does have conscripts and he has Amon, which will really quickly bring back the numbers of these crossbows. Poppin' Peter. <laughs> uh, so that is a pass on the panic. I believe that is a two. So even the corpse pile, that is going to be a pass. So over to Mitch. Um, I believe if I was Mitch, I would um, probably heal through two. No, you, you, yes. Okay, never mind. I was going to say you heal two with the constant order first, but then you'd actually heal less with Amon. Um, in reaction uh, to the attack, Watcher Noir gets played. John is going to shift up. And this could, this could put him in a position to actually uh, charge, retreat, shoot the Hedge Knights. So we'll see. This promises to be a very, very bloody game. It looks like both players are going to ignore the uh, scenario completely and just come down to a straight-up scrum in the middle. So yes, Amon is going for the heal. He's going to heal two on the crossbows for free and take another shot. Now he's ignoring the... It seems like he's ignoring the uh, Hedge Knights, and he's, uh, sorry, the, the enemy archers, and going straight for the Hedge Knights, which honestly are the, you know, the a, a big tooth as well, so understandable for him to do so. Uh, not quite in short range yet. We'll see if he gets a good roll. <clears throat> and I actually don't know Dario's cards very well. I don't know if Dario's got any cool tricks to turn off the shooting from the uh, stand and shoot or turn off from the abilities. I should check, but uh, lots of action happening, so no real time to do so. So seven shots go down. Really good roll. Six hits. Again, these guys... Okay, so it does make sense now why Engineer took the bag. It's to give the Hedge Knights better armor. So not only is it for the Sundering, it's also for the better armor, which is probably more important to keep his guys alive. So they have a three plus save, down to a four plus because of Sundering. Oh, and a terrible roll. Five wounds go down. And this unit is already pretty much half dead. A panic test. Oh, he's focusing on the same unit. Okay, very smart. They have exactly five wounds left. Uh, and they're going to be at a panic at even. Uh, minus one for the corpse pile, but plus one for controlling the bag due to Peter Baelish. So with an even panic test, he passes. He passes. Now, he may want to pop Taiko to heal back his five wounds. <laughs> it does look cock dice, but uh, you can hover your hand over it and it'll tell you what it is. Speaking of which, we you know this is what your game needs. Your game needs a dice tray where you can just like throw the dice in here, eh? I'm sure you can copy this mechanic and, and uh, you can actually copy this object and um, and uh, deploy it when you play uh, AOS on uh, TTS as well. Uh, true, six days would be a problem. Good evening, Ilya. Welcome back. All right, so in reaction, um, I wonder if Engineer is going to keep shooting to try and whittle down... Okay, so you know what? Interesting. Interesting that um, he couldn't pop... Well, he didn't pop the conscript order. So this might be as weak as these crossbows get. And if these Hedge Knights charge in with seven attacks, if all seven kill, he would need a crit fail panic to actually kill the unit. I don't think there's any way. Oh, there is way. There's a there's a neutral card that does give you plus one um, 
plus one dice, plus one hit. And I think if you control the envelope, it becomes plus two hits. And he does control the envelope. So if he draws, if he has that card, I can't remember what it's called. It's, a, it's an offensive or defensive card where you either deal a hit or block a hit. This unit Hedge Knights could blow up these crossbows, which would be hilarious. I think he's going in. He's uh, hovering around the unit, so I think he's going in. It's an auto charge. Five plus, you know, five plus d6 is auto in. He's going to eat a stand and shoot to the face with rerolls. Um, that will be pretty key because that will determine how many dice he rolls. He needs all seven dice. But yeah, with, with that card, he could pop this unit. I wonder if Mitch would want to shift sideways to the left. Um, that could put him over the corpse pile. It does, yes. He's going to shift to the si sideways instead of backwards, meaning that when the Hedge Knights charge in, they'll have the uh, hindering terrain blunting the damage. Okay, so we're going to see the shot. Seven shots hitting on threes with three rolls from the Ready Aim Release. Ready Aim Fire Rule, whatever it's called. Uh, not bad start for Mitch. Four hits, rerolling the three that missed. <clears throat> Uh, not fantastic. Only five hits. Five hits saving a four plus because Peter controls the money bag. So Sundering is blocked out by the money bag. Five saves on fours becomes... Ooh, good roll. Only one wound. Only one wound. And the panic is even again for um, bag and the corpse pile. So panic on seven. Panic on seven. Only one wound suffered. Even a crit fail here will not reduce his ranks. And he passes. Okay, this is going to be pretty huge. I wonder if he has that card. I think it's called uh, Wealth and something, but I can't remember what it's called. Okay, so uh, he didn't roll the charge yet. He should roll a dice for uh, tactics cards. He really needs he needs the plus two hits. Okay, he's got he's got it. Non is orderly charge, so you know he he could pop this unit. Oh, he's not. I, when you roll this card, when you play this card, is it after you roll dice? He did hover over his hand, so I think like he has it. I think he has it. Okay, so no rerolls because of hindering. So threes, not bad, not bad. Five hits, five hits, five hits is going to become uh, saving on sixes because of sundering. It doesn't seem like Mitch has shield. He would have played it earlier. Okay, so all the f saves failed, but he didn't play the card, which heavily implies that um, he didn't have it. Okay, so this unit is... If he had the extra two hits, even with the Conscript heal, maybe Stormcrow shooting could have killed them, but it's unlikely now. He's going to heal back four of the Conscripts, and plus, after John charges in, Rally Cry will heal two more as well. So yeah, that was... Oh! He failed the panic! He failed the panic! Oh man, if he had had that card for the plus two hits, he would have killed the unit. Oh man, that was close. That would have been a huge victory for neutrals to pop the dreaded... Okay, but the good... The interesting thing is, now, even with the conscript heal, Stormcrows could kill. So what he needs to do, he needs to... He's doing the conscript heal. He needs to charge John in for the rally cry which will heal up two more. And John is in the flank just barely. So yeah, that's what Mitch is doing here. He's keeping them alive. He's going to charge into the flank, um, which will heal up two more. And then with eight sh models, I don't know if the Stormcrows can pump out enough damage to finish them off. Oh, you know what? When um, Amon took the bag, uh, Varus should have used a token to deal hits to that unit. Yeah, so I think that was maybe a bit rushed. I think if Engineer was was on top of it, I think he should have played a uh, Varus token. Um, John is trying to swing over. To, this is a legal position, and I do believe if he's touching, he's actually engaged the other Hedge Knights. You are allowed... Oh, no, he's not 50-50, though. Yeah, this tray, if you look at it, he's not exactly on the line. So this is actually not a legal position. He's got to go flush or 50-50 to the other side. This is here we stand, yes. <laughs> Whatever we you should uh, you should see Ash's games. Most of Ash's games 
have painted miniatures in almost all my games. I've actually just finished painting my latest faction, we my Targaryens. Uh, or I've, I've painted everything I want competitively, and now I'm just painting up the uh, odds and ends that are left. So, so yeah, I think, you know, I'm not going to step in. They should work it out themselves. And they're playing in the lower bracket, so they may not care. Oh. Okay, so they are asking me on Discord anyway. Uh, I will answer. Yeah, so Mitch is asking me if he can come within an inch. He can, except he's not actually 50-50 um, to the right. Uh, so I just clarified my opinion. So again, I wouldn't offer it uh, unless they ask for it. Okay, so John goes in. John should do a lot of damage here. He's playing light uh, so that he gets rerolls despite going over the corpse pile. And it's going to be a lot of damage, I think, because... Um, I mean, flank attacks plus flank and corpse pile is bad for the panic as well. So Rally Cry goes forward. Mitch is, you know, miss hitting all his triggers is really, really good. And we're going to see eight dice hitting on threes into the flank. So eight dice hitting on threes. Good start for Mitch. Oh, not a good follow up though. Only six hits. Now it is in the flank, so he'll get four plus saves. Uh, Airship Engineer has been rolling pretty decent saves so far, so six saves on four plus. Pretty good! Holy cow, only one fail! His armor is hot! So hot right now. <laughs> and Panic at minus two is a fail, but minimal damage! Wow, he's really tanking a lot of damage here. So. I wonder what Engineer does. Now, he still hasn't used a Varus token. Yeah, he should have definitely used a Varus token when uh, Amon took that sword. And um, he controls the envelope and he controls the bag due to Peter. Seven shots is unlikely to kill these crossbows because of um, because he doesn't get rerolls to hit. He could spike dice and he could feel panic. The interesting thing, though, is that Engineer does go first round two. So a volley now into a first round volley round two could kill these crossbows. Um, the only way they could probably survive is if Mitch draws uh, Stan United Brothers. Okay, so uh, Mitch is doing a big retreat. It looks like he's going to try and pick off the um, other Hedge Knights who are on their last five wounds. And this would be pretty painful too. Uh, we should check, yes, so we should check from their perspective. And I would say that as of right now, I think they're in the front. They should click this highlight button. That will definitely tell which uh, arc they're in. But I believe they're in the front as it stands. I mean, oh, but he's doing a shift. Yes, after the shift, he'll definitely be in the flank. So this, this could be good night for these hedge knights. And... <sighs> It was hard to predict you take this shot. Normally you throw all your attacks at the same unit, but Mitch wisely sees that this unit just seems to have horseshoes, so they're probably not gonna get killed. So, you know, Jonathan did have the option to um, Taiko heal these guys, but I guess he didn't see the shot coming on this unit. So clever of Mitch to um, redirect his shot. Uh, he got a good hit roll again, six hits. This unit also has a four plus save because they have the bag. So the flank is countered by the bag. So six saves on four. Can we see another hero roll? Six saves on four. Uh, pretty good roll, only two. So he's down to the last three, which means he needs to crit fail the panic to um, to lose the unit. Now is minus one overall, flank and corpse pile. Oh, he did crit fail, brutal. The actual crit fail, snake eyes into three damage. Unfortunate, unfortunate. No, he's playing a card. He's re-rolling and he's gonna auto pass because he's near Dario. Huge, 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 huge. 
So now John's actually kind of vulnerable. He's going to eat a flank shot from Dario. And he's going to get charged by um, Hedge Knights. And he's already used his Amon and Conscripts. So, oh man, that is really big. Now, what does Dario give the unit? He gives them Sundering if you control the bag. So he does control the bag. But you know what? That's Oh, no, it's only for melee. Never mind. It's only for melee. Never mind. Okay. Wow. John could die here. A flank shot into a charge could kill John. A Tycho heal will bring him back up to full ranks, and he could actually kill the enemy commander here. But this scenario is so whack because the commander resurrects. Now, do you get bonus points for killing the commander? I forget. And they've moved these, the, uh, the card. I'm going to say no. I don't think there's bonus points for killing the enemy commander, but I could be wrong. I don't play this one often because most people don't want to play this scenario. Yeah, I don't think there is two. I think it's just controlling quarters and kills. Okay, so uh, Tycho is going on the horse. And I don't think there's a super clever way to use the horse. Uh, uh, engineer can easily get into the flank regardless. I mean, he might begin to the rear, to be fair. Actually, that's true. You know, If, if you don't try, you, you won't get there. He might be trying to sneak into the rear. And Varus can take a crown, crowns up. He might as well crowns up John or these crossbows, I guess. Now, if I was Engineer, I don't think this move was actually super important. I think what might be more important is to shoot with Bronze Unit. Because if they take too much damage from these crossbows, they won't be shooting with their maximum dice. So I don't feel like the horse was quite a crucial move. John's activated. These conscripts aren't coming after you. You can't get shot by these crossbows. I think I would have shot with Stormcrows instead. He is using the Tycho heal. Um, so he should have eight wounds left. Because he had three and he's healing five. So he should be up to eight. And I think, yeah, if he had remembered the Varus token, he could have done an extra two or three wounds to this unit. Uh, he would definitely pop the Vulnerable Token. Because he controls the Envelope, the Stormcrows would apply one again anyway. And yeah, a Volley at that point could have killed him. So I think forgetting to use the Varus Token was a pretty big deal. I'm going to stop talking about it because I've already mentioned it three times. Uh, and it gives more more... But it's round one. It's round one, and I'm pretty sure they can't score round one. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. They deployed on the line, just itching to fight. So I don't think they score round one. I mean, I could pull up the mission, but normally it's here and I could just hit it. I'm too lazy right now to, to pull it up. I'd rather just keep my eye on the action. So horse goes down. Um, and again, I think it was more critical to shoot. Now, activation-wise, it is seven versus nine. So yeah, Mitch will get all the last saves. Um, and he is retreating, it looks like, with the... Oh, yeah, it's too late now. It is too late. It is too late. Now, interestingly, as much as the retreat keeps him safe from the bowmen, it does allow these hedge knights to come in and charge. It does allow these hedge knights to come to charge. And if I were these hedge knights, I would probably pivot to face the crossbows just to make sure you're eating front shots. <clears throat> Yeah, that horse was a misplay. You did not need to move that unit. Oh, I'm going to stop talking about it. I'm obsessing over like one little thing. I would probably at this point shoot Brawn. Again, this is the only in, I mean, important play that's left really that your opponent can you know, affect you. I would shoot Brawn to these crossbows to try and take off a rank. <clears throat> And I would pivot these uh, Hedge Knights to face uh, the other crossbows. All right. I, oh, he's going on the board. Wow. Okay. Um, I guess he's going to crown out those guys for minus two. Again, <sighs> you can do that anytime you want. This shot is precious now, plus this unit should have pivoted. 
And he's looking at his tokens, but I think he's misreading it. You use them when your opponent takes the zone, not when you take the zone. <clears throat> or maybe Mitch is trying to read Varus, because no one really uses Varus. So he's like, what does Varus do again? But yeah, those extra three hits would have been pretty huge on these crossbows. Now, who takes those hits? Uh, one enemy unit, so you get the target. You don't have to even pick the guy attacking you. You can just target a unit to take three hits. Yeah, that should have been used. I wonder if he's letting him use it now. I wonder if he's remembering that Amon took the sword. I think he is. Oh, no, this is a panic. Oh, panic test. Minus two is a fail. One wound. One wound. Okay. That's when the crown's out. So if this unit heals up, it will be seven attacks with Tycho. Um, and there are seven models here, plus a panic test. I think what engineers should do is take the flank shot and see how much damage goes down on John. And this unit seems to be shifting and shooting again. But I feel like that should not be the case. Because didn't they use their... What? I am a little confused. I thought they used... So they shot with the order. Okay, maybe I have to count. I thought they shot with their order already. Oh no, this order was for spreading fire. Uh-oh. Yeah, this is this is not good. <laughs> I think he's taking a shot into the flank of the Hedge Knights. It's six dice hitting on threes. Okay, minus two, so saving on fives. This is not good. Yeah, he's he's being too cheeky with the Tycho. He should just pop it. Fives is dead. I don't think there's anything that's going to save him from that one. No. Nope. Yeah, he should have popped the Tycho. Yeah, so I forgot. He took a shot with Peter, and then he got charged. He retreated with his action and then shot with the order. So, yeah, just being a bit too passive with the Tycho. Now, I wonder if this unit is in range of Dario's unit for the shot. You know, I was going to say that killing the Watch Captain Crossbows would be a big deal because you kill two activations, but I forget that in the scenario, this scenario, they actually resurrect. So you don't actually gain that activation advantage. And I suppose even if you kill the unit, they can still pop Relentless for a shot because it's not activating. Um, so checking the distance, you know, checking the distance on Dario, it looks like he was within 14, like barely. So I would have shot these guys and just prayed for a panic. Fail, and if you don't fail the panic, like if you look at this here, doesn't this seem like 14? 10, 11, 12, it looks like 14 to me. Because you are going first next turn, and if you don't kill them now, you will kill them next turn most likely when you take first activation. You're not going to kill John, so you need to focus fire. Just as Mitch has been focus firing, you should also focus fire in return. So anyway, seven shots into the flank of... Oh, that was a good roll. Ah, see, this would have been devastating on those crossbows. There's only seven crossbows left. So four hits on John, saving on sixes, they are vulnerable. They fail all four. It's gonna be minus two to the panic. I mean, if you fail panic here, you might kill John. And that's pretty cool. With a failed panic here, you would kill John. You could kill John, I should say. Uh, but they pass with a minus two. Um, and now this unit of crossbows is just gonna double tap into these storm crows and it's going to be bad. That's okay. I think the only scenario where the mission rules let you score round one is Dark Wings, Dark Words. I think everything else you got to start scoring round two. So Mitch is focusing down the Hedge Knights, realizing what kind of threat they pose. And yeah, this unit should have rotated. Should have pivoted, I should say. Should have pivoted. And they are, ooh, are they within six? That is really close. I would probably give it to him. I think it's close, but I think he's barely in range. Whoever painted these Hedge Knights did a really nice job. These look really nice. I love these miniatures. I have one unit painted and I want to paint a second. Uh, but my second unit, well, I'll paint them like Robber Knights. My first one, they're all good guys. So we got five hits, and it looks like uh, they agree he's within short range for rerolls. So it's a full six, 
minus two for flank and sundering, plus one for the bag is minus one overall, saving on fives. They've been rolling pretty hot on, on, on their saves. Four wounds taken, um, and a panic at minus one overall, because he has the bag. Panic at minus one means needs an eight. Uh, it's a fail, but he's been pretty lucky, only taking minimal damage on field panic tests. Having said that, he's still pretty crippled. And, you know, we've got these Stormcrows left. So these Stormcrows should shoot these guys. And I'm going to be pretty sad if he kills four, because that means he would have reduced the amount of shooting coming at the Hedge Knights. Um, you are in range. He's probably going to... He's shifting. He's like, I don't give an F. I ain't backing up nowhere, son. All right. Seven shots into the front. They are vulnerable. No rerolls, just straight shots. Nice roll, five hits. His storm crows are better trained than mine, that's for sure. So he's got control of the bag through Peter, saving on sixes, and they're vulnerable. Yeah, storm crows doing work. Storm crows are an excellent unit. Kills all five. Panic at minus one. You know he's done a respectable amount of damage, I have to say. He's done a respectable amount of damage to the Night's Watch. Um, and that's why you see Strong Pros in, in some other factions, uh, like Baratheons and sometimes Lannisters. They pass the panic, no problem, so they're good. Uh, I think he's going to do his activation. He's probably going to pump more shots into the Hedge Knights. Now, the bad thing for Engineer is if he loses this unit, which is on its last four wounds, he can only bring one of his two units back. So that is one thing you try in this mission, is to kill two units at a time, so they can't bring back both. Um, so he's already within six. Oopsies. And he's probably still, yeah, I can barely clip the back. He's going to shoot the hedge knights again, and he's just inching forward fearlessly to get in short range of these crossbows, uh, these stormcrow archers, looks like. Okay, so uh, six shots into the flank with rerolls. Pretty good odds to kill them, I'd say. Pretty good odds to kill them. All right, six shots into the flank, hitting on threes of rerolls. Uh, good start, five hits. Into six, six at minus one overall because of the bag is saving on fives. He needs to make a lot. He made zero, so they are also dead. Okay. So, really bad shape for neutrals now. Only bringing back one unit. Uh, I think he's fully activated. We've got the conscripts left. In terms of table quarters, they should probably hang in their quarter. This is actually a five point unit, so they can hold this quarter. And uh, Mitch has actually been spreading out, so he's, he can control uh, the others with his expensive 10 point units and his commander's unit as well. So, um, looking pretty strong for Mitch. I would just. You know, this is actually a fine position. You're not in threat range of the. What you may want to do actually is because the hedge knights. Okay, this is actually smart because the hedge knights can spawn over here. He may want to move a little further away and just stay barely within twelve of these crossbows. Hedge knights can spawn here. They can't attack. There's no assault orders. There's no way to actually get them to fight. But they will be ready to fight round three, and they will be behind crossbows too. Okay, so. Um, round two should be rolling over. <clears throat> so Engineer played a card, and he's going to draw one. Uh, Mitch played... A few cards. Um, he played Light and Watcher, and he didn't discard anything, it seems like. So he's gone through... Oh, yes, yes, yes. He's gone through five cards because he played two and he drew two. Okay. So the Hedge Knights are respawning, but they can't respawn here. They respawn on a flank. So it looks like he's trying to win the scenarios. He's trying to put units in a quarter. Um... I say um because I don't know I don't know if this is the play 
both units here, John and the crossbows, are worth more. And you're not in a position to threaten. If you go here, yes, you don't contest the quarter, but you do threaten the rear of the crossbows and you threaten the conscripts. So, I don't know. Um, as his first activation, he should probably put Peter onto the sword to deny the sword and use the bag. The bag will actually give him a shot uh, via Motivated by Coin, which Braun and... Um, Oh, oh, this also works too, of course. Just take the sword as a sword of Tycho. Pfft, of course, that makes sense. Uh, shooting the flank of John. This could kill him, and he's going to get rerolls to hit as well. And because he's already vulnerable and in the flank, he doesn't need the other zones. So this could be actually a dead John. Seven shots into a flank shot into the panic could easily kill John here. So he needs a little bit of roll than that. If he gets every hit, though, this unit could just be dead, which would be hilarious. All right, decent five hits. You know, if they fail panic, possible to be killed. I wonder if he's in range of the conscripts. Okay, saving on sixes. He made one. You should probably pop the token. You should probably pop the token in case a panic fail kills the unit. And he's making him pop the token. Cool. All right, five down, two guys left, minus two on the panic test. Oh, he's playing a shield, so re-rolling. Okay, so he's um, re-rolling his five dice. And will we see any crows? Will we see any crows for some sixes? Oh, we got a crow, so still four down. He now needs to crit... Crit fail is panic, take three wounds. Uh, and John's unit is just getting monstrous. Lots of cards on this unit. Okay, so minus two on the panic test. This is a big roll. This could be very big swing for Engineer to kill an activation and the commander's activation, no less. Oh, crit fail, and they are dead, huge. Wow, 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 wow. So John is dead. Huge. All right. Feathered in the cap of the neutrals. Uh, now, there's another card, Fire, but it looks like he's not pulling it out. But yeah, minus two, Flank and Corpse Pile should be dead. And I think they're checking. I wonder if it's bugging for me because I cannot read the scenario. That was pretty big. Okay, so John is gone, and his cards, you know, we were just looking this up. These cards are actually dead cards now. They're in the discard. They don't come back on the unit. So that was pretty That was pretty great. So now that John's gone, um, these crossbows can either take, can either, can. okay, so wait, hold on. This is a six point, yeah, they can either contest this zone, or they can try and contest the head chance, but they can't do both. So... It all depends on whether or not these crossbows can finish off these storm crows too. It's actually going to be a close game than I thought. This is a very faction powerized mismatch. You've got the boogeyman of the Night's Watch, so he's doing a big heal. He's probably going to spread it out. He's probably put three one place. Nope, he put it all here. I guess. Okay, cool. And unfortunately, the way that uh, engineers pivoted, he will not be able to really retreat out of range of these crossbows. So I would probably throw down a weak encounter. I would probably use it as the bag, or use it as the envelope, and throw a weak encounter down to blunt some of the damage. Yeah, he does not need to use a Varus token to heal his own guys. He's at full power. So probably throw a weakened down, draw some cards. Looking good, like the play. And over to Mitch. Um, Mitch has one NCU left, which is his own Peter. And I don't think any of the zones are too impactful. If anything, maybe he wants to just take the crown and use the crown because he doesn't want to get uh, crown zapped himself. He doesn't have a lot of wounds left, and he's already popped Amon on the bag. Um, he looks like he's going to just do the order now and just take a shot on Braun before, um, before Braun shoots him. So he will be within short range, and he will get rerolls both ways because of the weakened token. All 
All right, so we got uh, seven shots through the watch captain, hitting on threes. Rerolls both ways. Uh, okay, rerolls to hit. And most likely, rerolls will weaken. Oh, both missed. Okay, some luck for, for uh, Engineer here. Will he use the weakened token? Looks like he will, just to really blunt the damage. And really good use, only two hits. Um, saving on sixes, I believe, uh, yes. Um, Mitch controls the bag, so bronze loyalty through coin does not kick in. So the saving on sixes. Two go down. I believe they're the six of the corpse pile, so it's going to be... Oh, they're not. So it's going to be even on the panic, so morale seven. And he passes. Good stuff. Okay, so that's only one shot. I would probably take this shot before he removes another rank off you to reduce your damage. The other zones, I feel like, don't matter. <sighs> if anything, maybe you take the horse to, like, back up, perhaps? Probably not. I would just take the shot, personally. <laughs> I would just take the shot. Activation-wise, it is one, two... It's two... It's five activations currently. This unit comes in activated versus um, one, two, three, four, six. So it's five versus six, so Mitch is still one activation up. So it looks like he's barely in range. He might go for the shot into a kill here, to be honest. So he controls two key zones. Vulnerable. Oh, he's already vulnerable. But more importantly, he controls the sword. Sword is the really important one to give you rerolls to hit. So if he's in range, that could be significant because he could kill two activations right here. And because of the angle, the crossbows cannot shoot back. He's more or less directly in front of the storm crows, but the storm crows are not really directly in front. So because of the measuring from the center, um, the, the crossbows cannot shoot back. Okay, looks like he's, I think, doing the right play here. He's activating these guys before they lose a rank um, from the shot, the shot that will be not weakened. And he will get rerolls and make them vulnerable. This could be actually a very powerful shot. He could easily kill five, six guys here. Could easily kill five or six guys here. Uh, not terrible, not the worst, not the best, but not the worst. Hitting on fours or rerolls. Pretty solid, six hits. He's already played one shield. One shield is down. So this could kill four or five guys, then a panic test. He might kill all six with the vulnerable token. All right, he's already killed four. I would definitely pop the vulnerable. He might kill the other two. Uh, he kills five. Pretty good. Pretty good. Now, does Mitch pass the panic? That is going to be pretty important, too. Minus one on the panic. Um, he is not playing a card, it seems like. He's just cleaning up John's dead cards. Now, the really funny thing is that when John respawns, if Mitch has for the watch, he can actually let John charge as his first activation, which is pretty filthy because normally activating units don't play a role in the game. But because of for the watch and uh, the bat, the horse or the sword, you can actually get a free charge off John, which could also become a retreat into a shot because of quick fire and swift retreat. Uh, panic is good. Panic is good. Okay. So that was good. That was a good play. Prioritizing the shot that mattered. Um, these guys are well out. So Peter could take the horse. And then he could use a Varus token to try and shift out of the way. It is a three inch shift. But again, the way he's angled, he will not be able to um, shift directly away, unfortunately. This this board edge is actually hurting him. He's going for the bad envelope. Oh, wow. Interesting. 
So he's taking two wounds here. He, yeah, he used Peter as uh, the crown. Very interesting play. I mean, shots into a panic fail could just kill this unit. And then Engineer will be again on the back foot, only able to resurrect one thing. I think you resurrect the Hedge Knights just for their mobility. Though, to be fair, the crossbows, uh, the Stormcrow archers can shoot when they respawn. They can shoot because they have bronze, so they can use the bag or the sword to shoot with. So that, that is a bit of a tough one. <clears throat> so there's no reason now. Now, I wonder, how does Varys interact with Peter? Uh, yeah, so it actually is based on the zone that you claim. So he couldn't have used a panic test himself. It's based on the zone that you claim. Okay. So, do you need to delay? There's nothing really to delay at this point. You might as well either take the shot with... Okay, so interesting. He could have used this to shift up and get into range if he was out of range. I would take this shot now, try and cripple this unit before um, they get out of range. So he should check this range. Was he within 14? If he is, I would take the shot. You might even kill them with rerolls to hit and a failed panic test. And that would be huge, because you would actually kill two activations this round, and you'd only get to bring back one of these units. He's going for Varus. Uh, yeah, he's going for Varus. Oh no, Varus is going to claim a zone. So he's trying to make sure, and that makes a lot of sense. The Crown Zap is probably going to have very little effect. So he's putting Varus down to claim a zone. Now, Varus is a five-point unit, so Varus is being used. Okay, so you know what? I don't think Varus should go here, though. Okay, let's think about it. This is where this game, this mission gets actually tricky. He's going to control this zone. He's got nine points here. Um, Mitch has ten points here. This ten point unit can contest any zone he wants. Okay, Mitch already controls this zone here. Now, this also is very important. Uh, no, it's not. <laughs> I was going to say it's important because if he kills him, he's going to claim the zone. He already claims the zone because this is a ten point unit as well. But it looks like. It looks like they are not in that zone yet. They're still on Mitch's half. Okay, so seven shots, six shots. This is too many dice. Six shots on threes. There we go. Six shots on threes. We rolling the hit. If he kills the unit, it's going to be a big point swing. It's a getting one. He's going to lose one. So it's a two point swing if that unit dies. Hey, how's it going, Carl? How's it going? All right, we got five hits, uh, saving on sixes. Okay, uh, so you only failed four, which means he will not lose the unit. That's actually very significant. He will not lose the unit to a panic fail. He's testing at even, and he passes the panic too. Okay, cool. Mitch is gonna have to devote more effort in the killing that unit. So as it stands, this unit is now completely done. So so Mitch owns this quarter. That's one point here. That's one point here. He now has 12 points here. So this unit should be used to contest Dario. So let me just count again. One, two, three. So it's actually going to be two, one right now. So it could be two, two. It could be two, two for scoring if this unit gets into Dario's quarter. Or, or they can move forward into um, this quarter of the Stormcrows, and that'll make it 2-2 two, two also. In fact, that's probably the safe play. The only risk you take is by moving forward, you put yourself into Dario's range, and Dario, with control of the swords, could kill those, cross, uh, those crossbows. Rerolls with um, a vulnerable token could kill them. Oh, he's playing a card. He is looking for a commander card. And I'm really curious because I'm really unfamiliar with neutrals, so I really don't know what he could be looking for. Uh, for anyone new to TTS, there's a fast way to do this. You can just right click and then hit the search button to look for the card that you want. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
It's actually a very tight game. I gotta give props to Engineer for giving uh, the Night's Watch a, a pretty good run, it seems like. Oh, he's doing it such a slow way. He's actually flipping all the cards over. I think he found... I think he found the card he's looking for. Yeah, you just have to right-click and hit the search button. Can I... There we go. <laughs> okay, way more efficient. There we go. Uh, yeah, I'm curious which card he's gonna be looking for. So you know what? After an explosive start, the game has slowed down with the death of the Cav, and we may see it go to round three or four because you do score kind of slowly in this mission. You don't get a bonus for for your commander, so. This is kind of a taste of the next edition also. You know, when the commanders won't score bonus points, you're gonna see rounds probably go a little bit later to rounds four or round five, instead of finishing round three, round four. Okay, so I believe it is Engineer's turn. So yeah, this is, oh, he's played, yeah, that's right. So yeah, he's back to five cards, he's drawn his Dario card, so he's activating Dario. I think he might barely be in range. And we'll see. If he's not in range, he cannot escape. Uh, he can escape. No, he can't escape because these crossbows can march forward and then pivot and then with the action um, shoot. Okay, so the conscripts are being used to delay. Cool. They're putting themselves to have the option to, you know, control quarters later. He doesn't need them in this quarter because the crossbows already control it. So he's just moving forward. Um, and yeah, the critical question is, is Dario in range to lay a shoot down, beat down on those crossbows? Oh, I think he just passed. Now that I think about it, he clicked it, didn't do anything, so I think he just passed. And I think it's all I think it's all Mitch now. Yeah, I think he activated and passed. I, I think he should have checked. I think he was in range. He's doing a conscript order. And yeah, he's gonna get shot himself. They're gonna march forward ten pivot and then use the um, Relentless Order to take a shot into the Storm Crows. I think he might have been in range. And you know what, if I was Mitch, I would just go all the way because you're first next and you can just pivot and you can march 10, pivot, Shift forward to, and it looks like that's what's happening. He's going for the full 10, shift, pivoting around, shifting towards Dario, getting the rerolls to hit, and then going first again, uh, round three, and doing the same thing. And two full, oh, he wants to finish off. Oh, this is pretty vicious. Vicious, but uh, the smarter play. Just guaranteeing, um, guaranteeing less options. And like I said earlier, if you can kill two units, you can only respawn one at a time. So you know what, I like this play more, I do like this play more, because it's going to give Engineer harder issues and less activations down the road. Very cool play by Mitch. And Mitch has been telling me, you know, he feels like one of his mistakes in the game has been um, not focus firing, and I, I feel like this game he's definitely shown, he's learned from that. He's definitely focus firing, for sure. He's rethinking his move. I like that move. I wonder why he's rethinking. I thought that was a pretty good play. Oh, is he changing his mind and going for the Hedge Knights? I guess the Hedge Knights do pose a small threat to the Conscripts. 
So he's in range. I don't like this play as much. The other Hedge Knights will for sure come on now. I don't know if I like this play. Oh, but is he contesting this objective now? Is that why? He is, isn't he? Yes, he's got 14 points here now, which outranks this. So Mitch is going to score. It's still 2-2. Two -two. It's still 2-2. Two -two. Never mind, because now these guys control the quarter. They control that quarter. Yeah, I think he went the wrong way. He was going to score 2-2 two -two anyway, but he's now shooting Hedge Knights, who are the most durable thing to shoot against. Ah, uh, looks like he got six hits. Pretty tasty. No bad control, so minus one saving on fives. Ooh, and he failed all six. That is unfortunate. But you know what? Honestly, he's made a lot of saves. Maybe this is justice. Um, no card play. Oh, we do see a card come out. I think he blocked two hits. Nope. There it is. Planning an insight. This is the card I'm talking about. The one that if he had had early, could have finished off that unit. So he blocks two hits, takes a panic, and he passes. So that was pretty That was pretty big. Keeping them on next rank is pretty big. Now, Mitch will probably shoot as his first activation. Um, if he does take the sword, Jonathan needs to use a token and deal hits these conscripts. And then these hedge knights can maybe move forward and kill these conscripts. And I wonder if he put himself in range of um, Stormcrows in the flank too. Okay, so two points each should be should be two points each, should be three four, four three for Mitch, I should say. And the hedge knights come back, and if I was Mitch, I would just plop them down behind behind here. They are also out of range of conscript support. They can only rely on an aim on heal. Uh, seem to be counting. Okay, Mitch has, yeah, same hand, uh, and he has played seven cards, four, five, six, seven. Now, yeah, going on the bag, I, I don't remember what cards he got out of it. So, you know what? This verse is very interesting. It made the crossbows come back, which may have saved, which may have saved Engineer, to be honest with you. The crown was going to be less influential, and he kind of wants crossbows shooting the tough fur hedge knights. Okay, so I predict we're going to see Peter onto the bag for a shot. They're each going to resurrect a unit. Oh, and the question is, did Mitch draw... Watcher, uh, sorry, for the watch. That would be cruel. So he's discarding a card. He's discarding things of black. Very smart. This is the only quote unquote bad Night's Watch card that you do not want early game. Late game, it's a backbreaker when you kill something and heal, but early game, it does clog your hand. So where he deploys this unit will tell you, <laughs> will tell you whether or not he's got uh, for the watch or not. So because he's deploying here, this looks like it's about 12 inches away. This heavily implies he does not have for the watch because he would need to roll a six. He would need to roll a six to get that charge in with a re-roll, but still. You know what? <laughs> I wouldn't put it past Mitch. Mitch is known to be bloodthirsty. He could go for for the watch charge here, um, but I think it's unlikely. So again, if I was engineer, this unit cannot activate. I would just plop behind these crossbows and try and finish him off but he's not he's going here he's going here he's, he's another reason why to go here that makes sense is to put more points in this quarter so there is so much to think about and this is why i actually really like this mission because it makes you have to think more it's not just you know sit on objectives and kill things you actually have to consider another level of the game so i really like it i stand by the random number generator people i stand by it All right, are we going to see Peter onto bags for swords? Denying bags is a big deal. Um, it powers up both Braun and Dario. And it is cool that uh, 
Engineer has Varus. Varus is a 5 point NC. You can claim a zone on his own. So he's denying horse instead. Nope. Yeah, we're going for bag. Bag into a shot. Yep. Okay. Yeah, it makes it makes the hedge knights weaker. D powers brawn. Yeah. So this is pretty good. Now I believe I believe Dario actually has a card that says I control the bag. So maybe that's what he fished for. Now that I think about it. Yeah, I think he's got a card that says I control the bag. He's got another card also that says um, I think Cripplo and Cripplo and Precision, which could be very explosive damage. So he's going to take the shot here, very smart to just finish off Brawn and deny him an activation. And in response, I would see if Engineer could get a charge, a hero charge in these conscripts. Seven attacks could kill that unit. So I would check before you commit to anything. It looks like it'd be a bit of a far charge. Could be a four plus, maybe even a five plus. Um, but you know what? In return, his own swords could shoot these in the flank. All right, this should be the end of Zombie Shakespeare. We should see six shots kill off the last four Stormcrows. Uh, two misses. So we do have one arrow per guy so far. Uh, there are six arrows, so one guy will get shot in both eyes. Okay, so sixes, he needs to roll three sixes here. He got close, that was really close. That was really close. Okay, so they're dead. <clears throat> so now Mitch will also control this quarter. It does kind of put this unit out of the game, though, for now. Because they won't be able to use a maneuver into a shot, I believe. So, yeah, I wonder if Dario can actually shoot down range here. I wonder if Dario can shoot down range. And you know what? If he can, he should take the envelope with Peter. Hmm. He should really measure this. I feel like this is almost in range. I feel like this is really, really close. So he's using it for the maneuver because he's going into the conscripts, but he will he will get the charge in the conscripts. So that's not a not a terrible move. But my curiosity is burning. Like were these stormcrows in range of the flank with a shift? Oh, you know what's interesting? When Peter took the bag, he could have used a token. He did use a token to heal something. Uh, I think he healed the Hedge Knights. He did heal the Hedge Knights. Um, did he heal the Hedge Knights? Hold on. This has taken three, four wounds. No, he did not heal the Hedge Knights. He did not he heal the Hedge Knights. So what did he do when he used the Varus token? I don't remember. That unit had taken four wounds because they blocked two with that card careful playing whatever it's called okay so he does have Tycho still so even with this shot he might be able to um i mean with Tycho, he should be able to survive and uh finish off these conscripts uh looks like we've got five uh looks like he oh hold on This is now nine wounds. He's re-rolling to hit. So he's got all, he's got all seven, saving on fives. <clears throat> no bag control yet. Wow, great roll. Only two wounds. Mm, so now they've taken three plus two is five wounds. There's seven wounds left. They passed the panic. So I think, I think, yeah, I think he forgot to remove the wound tokens when um, Peter took the bag. Okay, so I think he's going for it. He's going for the auto charge into the conscripts. He might have the plus two hits card, uh, or plus one hit, that is, and that could kill these guys. Even if he doesn't have that card, being near the corpse file could finish him off also, since they take extra damage. And that would be very significant, because now these guys would not be able to shoot. Well, they can shoot the other unit, but... You know, maybe they don't suffer too badly. So let's see if he gets a disorderly charge. 
he does not sound solid now again seven attacks could just kill these guys if they all hit they will be vulnerable because engineer has the sword so with sundering he could just kill these guys unless we've got card play from um shields or something so I probably wouldn't use it because the panic will probably kill you anyway. So we got seven dice hitting on threes. Oh, he's playing Reckless Strikes, Critical Blow, and Precision. This could be, uh, this this will probably kill them. A crit or two will for sure kill the unit. So we just not, we need not a terrible roll here. <laughs> threes with Crit Blow and Precision and Sundering and no ones. Oh, we, oh, good roll. He's already got six hits re-rolling the two fails he's already got six hits and a precision oh he does take a wound not terrible so he's going to deal one wound and he's going to get three four five six hits out of it one wound and six hits this unit should be dead they're saving on sixes with a vulnerable token it means they should be dead he should have a vulnerable because he controls the sword they should be vulnerable so six saves and sixes let's see what mitch rolls He's already played a shield. Will he have a second one? And the vulnerable token goes down. Wow, Mitch rolled three sixes. Good thing he's got a vulnerable. Good thing he's got a vulnerable. All right, re-rolling those sixes. Um, nothing important, I don't think. Oh, why are they damaged? Why are they so low? He does slap on the second shield. He also only uh, failed five, hilariously. Okay, so he loses five. So the unfortunate thing for Mitch is that a panic fail will still kill them unless he has fire. So he's at minus one. I wonder what happened there because this is not a Stormcrow unit. And I could have swore he had more wounds. I don't know how he rolled max dice. They do fail their panic. Does he have a fire? He's holding a card. He does have a fire. He had both defense cards. Pretty lucky. So um, he needs to roll a four. I think he's better off re-rolling the one. Right? Uh, the odds of rolling eight or higher is less than rolling a four plus. So you should just roll that and get a four plus. Oh, oh, it flipped over. They live with one wound. Huge. Uh, so that's bad. I think this unit can now shift backwards and take a shot. Um, Amon has not gone down yet, but Amon does not have a bag. He will only, quote unquote, heal three. I wonder what zone he takes. That was pretty big. That was pretty big. It will make for a bloody um, turn four, though, for Engineer. So he's going to try and back up two and get a shot into the flank. And I'm, again, I really want to know what happened to these Hedge Knights, because I could have swore he had less wounds. It's going to be a pretty horrible shot. But the failed panic could kill his own conscripts, which is hilarious. OK, so the failed, the panic could kill his own conscripts. <clears throat> so he is reconsidering, looks like. Oh, that didn't look accurate. That did not look accurate. Unless he didn't back up too. Oh, and yeah, they, they brought back the wound. So I guess, I guess there must have been some misclicks happening. Oh, unless he used a Tycho heal. He did use a Tycho heal. Okay, so yeah, I don't know. I don't know what happened to those guys. All right, so with the Tycho heal, Mitch is less confident now about shooting the flank, or he'll probably just kill his own unit. Um, What does Engineer have left? He has three activations left, and Mitch has a lot. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, the crossbows... 
with the watch captain just adding so much cheap activations, heavily out activating the neutral player in this case. Okay, so he did pop aim one for the heal. He's going for the envelope, which is actually probably the least value for Varus. I don't think Engineer cares about drawing a card, so that's pretty smart on Mitch's part. He's going to throw a token down. Uh, it looks like he threw a vulnerable onto the Hedge Knights, knowing that the crossbows can shoot them. Um, and what I would now do as Engineer is probably take the horse and disengage. You run away and pivot. So you don't get shot in the flank. And you know what? A crown zap onto the conscripts could kill them also. Right? Minus two and plus one damage could just kill those conscripts. But before you do that, though, Engineer, I would take the horse so that you can retreat and not get shot in the flank with a vulnerable token. Quarter wise, Mitch should control two. And Engineer should probably control one, unless he throws Varus into this quarter here, because Varus is five points on his own. And he would kind of almost stay abreast. He's only a few points behind. Oh, he's now checking. He's now checking to see if he could have shot the crossbows in the flank. I think I just saw a measurement. So he doesn't seem to be very careful about it, because he's taking the horse, but he's going to use it to, I think, push Dario up. So now I'm going to check the movement for the flank shot. I'm really curious. Uh, he's pointing at Braun angrily. <laughs> I'm sure he's not really angry. Both Mitch and Engineer seem like chill people. Um, okay, so I really want him to open up this measurement because I want to see how close he is. I think he, he looked like he was in range, but I could be wrong. Okay, he's out. He's out. Okay. Whew. Okay. <laughs> um, interesting. He's moving away. Okay, it's not interesting. I was going to say he's moving away from John, um, which is not shocking. John will mess this unit up horribly. I would have maybe gone at a slight angle away from John, but to also put yourself closer to this unit. Yeah, this is exactly what I would do. You're still moving away from John, but you're getting closer to set up a shot into the flank of these guys. It's too bad he's not really been able to focus his damage so that he's been able to Mitch has been able to survive with units. Yeah, this is this is a good this is a good position. It's pretty far. Oh, he's going into the wood. And he's pivoting all the way to see John. You're first next, are you not? I don't like this position. He's giving himself the option to shoot John. Maybe he's trying to kill John. You know, with a shot into a charge with Hedge Knights, you could kill John. So that could be it. And in the wood is as defensive as you get. John will give you plus one to your save. And if you have the bag, which is imagine what Peter will do, Peter will probably take the bag for the sword. Um, it activates Dario's... Um... Oh! He's, this is not what I thought he did. I thought he gave him extra armor. This is the old Dario. Old Dario gave you more armor. Okay then. My bad. So I think Engineer's pretty much done at this point. He's got one NC left to work with. The Crown Sap is probably too much of a Hail Mary play. So we're seeing a Stan United Brothers, I imagine. Yep, he's going to peel off a few wounds from the crossbows hilariously to heal the uh, conscripts, which is super funny. Normally it's the other way around. <laughs> no one wants to get demoted from a crossbow into a conscript. Um... And I imagine that Varus will take this quarter. That might lead Engineer, sorry, that might lead Mitch to retreat with his uh, with his conscripts.
So if we do the math, Mitch has this quarter. He currently has this quarter. This unit could move into here. Can they? They might be able to move into there. So Mitch is already retreating. Mm, this might be a misplay on Mitch if he doesn't measure carefully. He needs to decide which quarter he wants to be in. If he's on the line, I believe Engineer gets to choose. Uh, and I believe Engineer plans to put theirs, the five-point NCU, in this quarter down here. So as it stands right now, it's one, it's two one for Mitch. But if he doesn't measure this carefully, I think if, yeah, to me he's barely in the bottom left quarter. So right now it's three one for Mitch, and um, engineer. Oh no, it's yes three one for Mitch. The crossbows, the crossbows, and the conscripts. So Mitch could put Varus here to contest, and it'd be two one instead. Um, now, yeah, that doesn't change anything. These crossbows won't change anything. No matter what quarter they go into, they'll negate um, uh, engineer's control. So I think I think it's going to become two one for Mitch. It'll be seven four, and the next round could be the last. If Mitch scores two points and kills something, he will win the game. But props, big props to Engineer for giving him a, a fight. You know, taking off a lot of wounds and and putting him at risk of, of losing units. He's killed John once, which is already a feather in your cap. So, I wonder what they're debating now. I think they're doing the math. <laughs> there is a lot of math in this mission for sure. I think they're doing the math. And if I was Mitch with this unit, because they kind of backed up, you may want to march forward, or maybe you do a, man a maneuver into a shot might actually even work. Yeah, you could maneuver five, and I think you'd be, yeah, I think you will be in range for a shot. So the Storm Crows here will actually get shot, I believe, by those crossbows. You gotta like play the Jeopardy music at this point. Da, na, na, na. Yeah, this is the play. Varus in the quarter, contest these conscripts. And I think Engineer's completely done with this. Oh no, he's not done. He still has a shot with Dario. Uh, I guess now you retreat the crossbow or crossbows to shoot Vivas in the flank. Very smart of Mitch to uh, retreat first. So they don't take a panic test as well, which is good. And he's retreated in an inch so that these unit cannot pivot. At least cannot pivot sideways. It can pivot 180, but not sideways. And yeah, we see the shift backwards into a shot, I imagine, into the flank. We already know that it's legit. You got seven dice on threes. This should hurt because of the vulnerable token and no back control. It's gonna be minus two and a panic test. This is gonna be pretty painful. Should be Five or six wounds, probably. Uh, decent start. Five hits into into seven hits. Seven saves on fives with a vulnerable token. You probably fail six of these, if not all seven. Uh, average start. We rolls the last two. You might get one. Oh, he's not using the vulnerable. Interesting. He passes the... He fails the panic, isn't he? Oh, he passes. He's not near the corpse pile. Oh, he passes. Nice, nice, nice. Um, I wonder why he didn't make him re-roll. I guess because he failed most anyway. That's not unreasonable. Okay, so we got one last shot on John. Uh, and... It's kind of like a war cry, this card. Panic and weakened. Oh, so he didn't have time to do it onto this unit. So that's why he angled it this way. Okay, interesting, cool. Like a weird kind of war cry, which does panic and weakened. 
not worse. I don't think it's worse than Warcry. Warcry is obviously all offense. Um, the the weekend gives you a little bit of defense, so not a, not a bad thing, especially when your opponent's getting rerolls to hit. Getting plus two to the roll. <laughs> oh no, he rolled snake eyes. Uh, is he playing anything else to make that go away? That was unlucky. Uh, plus two means he needed a five, so that was really unlucky. Unfortunately, Dario's men were not having any of that. That is too bad. That is too bad. Okay, but to be fair, anyone on Snake Eyes, even poor fellows, would have failed that test. <laughs> even near a tree, even near a tree. Okay, um, so now it's back to... No, no, so now it's down to the Storm Crows, right? That was starter friendly turn. This is going to take a shot onto John. He controls uh, just the sword, which is honestly the best zone anyway, for rerolls to hit. They've got poor armor, so you, you know, probably get four kills or so. Something like that. don't think there so he'd have to shift forward maybe he's worried about shifting forward maybe he doesn't activate to shoot and you know the way he's angled he may not even be in range so what could he do he couldn't shift forward he's going to shift forward take the shot and then first activation use the um use the hedge knights to flank and kill john that's possible and it also depend on how many kills he does right here so we got seven shots hitting on fords of rerolls with a five plus save. Uh oh, yeah, they recalled and uh, they recalled too far. Unfortunately, he didn't save his last location. I think it recalls to the start of the turn. So gonna have to kind of fudge it to fix it. No big deal. I believe I believe he was barely in range. Barely. So yeah, I think they're going to reposition the maneuver. Uh, they can kind of accurately measure this as well because they know that the Storm Crows came within 12. Of the uh, crossbows. So yeah, I think they are, they're literally trying to recreate the maneuver. This looks closer. I feel like he was more in the wood. Yeah, this is, I don't think this is accurate, but what can you do? If you're not saved, you just kind of have to make it up and do your best. I wonder if he's letting him shoot the flank of these crossbows. Oh, he's not taking the shot. He says, I messed up. I don't know where it was. I'll just maneuver and set up. That's very noble of engineer. I think that's what happened because he couldn't accurately gauge the shot he's saying forget about it i will just take a maneuver instead that's very noble of him and that is actually the right play instead of like fudging it which gives you an advantage probably um he's just saying i won't take the shot that's really nice of him i i imagine that's what happened <laughs> mitch is also a really nice guy i don't think mitch said oh, oh no shot Whoa, typical aggression from Mitch here. I thought you'd take a long range shot. He's like, no, sir, I want those close range rerolls. So he's just marching right into the face of these Storm Crows and cornering. Mitch loves this. He did this to me the other day and it really worked well. Okay, I think that's pretty much round. So scoring wise, um, like I said, I think it's going to be... 2-1 for Mitch, so it should be 7-4. Should be 7-4. So Mitch um, has gone through half his deck at a very minimum, which is pretty good. Uh, Engineer is a little behind. Not far, but, you know, he's going to have... I mean, is he going to discard any cards, I wonder? That's the really important part. So these Stormcrows come in. He's trying to... He's trying to score. He's trying to score. Oh, he's putting himself here. Very interesting. 
This could be very spicy, actually. Oh, I kind of like that position more. You claim the quarter, you threaten this unit with a flank shot, flank shot with swords, and then you also leave the bag open to take another shot. Mitch would definitely heal, though, with uh, Amon onto the bag. See, this unit, I don't, I mean, are they in range? I don't think so, right? These are 12. I don't think that's two. So I liked, I mean, you could even go behind these guys here for the extra panic. I would have gone behind here, probably. I don't think he's in range of these conscripts. And what I what I do for anyone who's playing on TTS is I just draw a line from this point to this point, because each of these increments is six inches. All right, so Peter is going on to the sword. Nope, he's discarding first and drawing one. Uh, Mitch has discarded a second take to black. Very interesting, because I think that these crosses would have killed these um, hedge knights. And he's 11 cards deep. Both of them had, both have had pretty good churn. Both have had pretty good churn. So he's definitely going to shoot. And he's taking the sword to make sure that Mitch does not get a sword as well. Uh, who will he shoot with? So this is where I feel like, whoa, he's using a maneuver? He's using Peter as a maneuver to get into the wood. He's going right into his face. I am confused. <laughs> I am confused. He might be going for a charge. Dario does give them sundering with bag control. He might be going for the charge. That would be really funny. <clears throat> Not what I expected. Not what I expected. He has Pop Tycho. Okay, so the other Peter is going to take the crown and probably use the bag, I imagine. Oh, he's using the horse. Interesting. He hasn't played for the watch yet. So you have to watch out, and you have to um, take this horse yourself now so that John does not play for the watch into your guys. But I guess based on the way Mitch is maneuvering and pivoting, he doesn't seem to be aiming... Well, I was going to say he doesn't seem to be aiming for the hedge knights, but now he is. So it looks like he's trying to set up a for the watch. For the watch. Uh, but it doesn't really matter too much because... Engineer can just um, spin around and charge John to the face. And you reduce a lot of the damage because you deny him his rerolls. And based on the angle Mitch is at, he should be able to retreat. I was going to say he may not be able to retreat, but he's going to move forward, I'm sure. Um, and give him some space to retreat. Even that angle, I think. And he's, he's totally fine now. If, if he gets charged in the front, he definitely has space to retreat. Is there any other play that these knights can do? There's no real running away, I don't think. You might as well just charge John to the front, I imagine. Might as well before they womble combo you. Yeah, you're definitely going to be in the front. Uh, he does have the sword for vulnerable. The sad thing is, he's probably not going to kill John, and he will expose these Hedge Knights to the flank as well. But I guess the Hedge Knights, honestly, um, the crossbows, I should say, by the corpse pile, already have a target. Now, he seems to be straight up avoiding John. The problem is that there is still a horse. He's committed their actual activation to run away from John, but he's not actually safe. Because Amon can still take the horse and have John face the unit, and then they can charge and shoot. So he hasn't really avoided the danger because there's still a horse. Now, if he takes the horse, Varus can use a token and he can shift. I don't think you can shift to avoid John, but you can shift these 
brawn storm crows into shooting range for sure. So I wonder if that was the ploy to force your opponent to take this horse. I don't know. I don't think so. I'd rather charge the hedge knights in, and I would have just deployed the storm crows in a position to shoot without having to do this. And you know what's funny? Uh, yeah, John can still shoot the Hedge Knights, but it's not ideal. So yeah, Amon does take the horse. Amon does take the horse. He heals the crossbows. He's going to maneuver John to face those knights. Now, is a Varus token being used? It is being used. Okay. And if I was Engineer, I would move these Storm Crows up to shoot the rear of those conscripts. Rerolls into the back. Maya's Fear the Panic is very good odds to kill them. And John is just pivoting. He's trying to get into the flank, but he's only movement six. He should not be able to get into the flank. Yeah, I think you just turn around and face those hedge knights. There's no getting into the flank. careful i don't know why i don't think he's going to take a shot and only a shot into the flank i think he's going to charge he should just charge because get both a shot and a charge is generally better than just a flank shot i think he's being too tricky here but it could be my imagination so i'm wondering what does engineer do with the shift oh you know what he used a token earlier he's down to one i wonder if he used a crown zap and did Mitch pass. Yeah, I saw him move a token over here. I thought it was the same token he used, but he's down to one. So he must have used it on the crown zap most likely, and he must have passed. I don't see any removed models. So what will he do with this shift? Oh, he might shift sideways to avoid getting shot up by the crossbows. That's pretty good. That's actually very good. It's going to prevent their death. I think that's actually very smart. Better than what I was going to do. Because it keeps your hedge knights alive. And if they, you know, flank the conscripts, they can still kill them. Okay, so I think John is activating and taking a shot into the flank. No, that can't be right. Mitch just took the horse. This shift was a response. I don't know how he... Oh! That's pretty smart. I just realized he's doing quick fire. He's doing quick fire off the horse. That's really smart. I didn't think about that. I always think of the quick fire coming after the charge, but Mitch is doing it now while he's got a flank shot. Very clever. Unfortunately, only rolled three hits. Uh, no bag, so it's going to be minus one. That's pretty smart. Props. What a spect. Uh, to fail, panic at probably minus two, just barely in range, I'd say. Yeah, minus two. <clears throat> minus two is a big pass, huge. Okay, so it's now, um, it's now uh, engineer's turn. I predict flank charge. Easy flank charge, you don't even have to do this. You're not going to get into the rear. They should just accept that it's a flank and not do this stuff because it's a waste of time. Um, yeah, I mean, are you not charging them in the flank? <laughs> he isn't. What? Is he trying to score points? 
I guess he wasn't confident. Now, they have shield up. I guess they would have blocked a hit. I guess he wasn't confident that he would kill this unit with only maybe three wounds. Yeah, I can see that. That's actually maybe smarter than what I was thinking. I was going to just charge, but he can only kill three with the attacks, and then he needs a crit panic fail to kill the whole unit. So he was probably never going to kill the whole unit. So he's just trying to eat points. You know, he probably won't die this round. I shouldn't say that. He might die. This unit is stuck. These guys can turn, take a shot. John still can charge the flank. Oh, I see a dice. John's charging. Okay, so John's activating and charging. He only gets his one um, swing, though. Uh, is he going to play any cards? Well, we see a sword for nine dice. I think we do. I think we do. Nope, I guess not. Eight dice hitting on threes with rerolls. And Rally Cry should go off and heal the conscripts. We don't talk about the room. No, no, no. Everything hit. Eight hits. Saving on fives. Good roll. Blocked half. Pretty good. So now they're only half dead. <laughs> so panic at minus two. Flank and corpse pile again. Minus two saving on a nine. That is a pass. Ten. Huge. And you know what? The bag is still open. The bag is still open. So you can live with the hedge knights by putting a bag and by weakening the crossbows. The crossbows, in fact, these crossbows should probably shoot the hedge knights in the rear. And they're going to retreat, which makes sense, so that they don't um, take the panic test from the shots that are coming in. Now, I think Mitch, with a double shot in the back and a single shot from the side, can probably kill these hedge knights, even with the bag. So the question is, if he kills them, he'll be at 8. Can he control 2 quarters? Um, the answer is probably yes, right? He's going to not control this one down here. He should control this one. This is a 10-point unit, and this should also be controlled. Tycho, now he does have his NCUs. He could add weight. For example, Varus can be used in this quarter to take control of it. Um, they are retreating, so they are pivoting. Okay, cool. Now, that's actually a huge deal. He's no longer eating rear shots uh, from the crossbows. So Tycho is being used to claim a quarter. Interesting. Um, this is actually more points. John is 10. This is 11. So Mitch, I mean, Engineer controls this quarter now. That's actually a pretty smart play. Engineer is very gritty. A lot of respect for the grittiness here. Trying to really make a game of it, get as close as possible. Um, can he still lose? Can he still lose? I think the answer is yes. If all those crossbow shots, he should be eating three volleys. If three crossbow volleys can kill those hedge knights, then Mitch wins. He's going to get two volleys from there. Which really means that Engineer should not have put Tycho here. Like, Tycho could have gone at any point in time. You should probably use these stronger archers to take off a rank and reduce the amount of shots coming at you. Right? This was not a priority. This can be done at any time. This is a priority. you got to take off a rank. Yeah, so for anyone joining us a bit late, it is 7-4 for Mitch. Um, he's brought a very shooty Night's Watch army, double watchful crap captains with John and Hunters, conscripts with a watch recruiter. He has lost John once to a bit of shooting from um, Stormcrows and Head Knights, I believe. Um, but out activating his opponent with all the crazy heals. He's been able to kill each Hedge Knight unit at least once, and these Storm Crows here as well. So the score is right now 7-4. This could be the end of the game if these crossbows with their double tap can kill these uh, Hedge Knights. These crossbows can also pivot and shoot. So this unit is going to be eating three shots, um, but there is a bag which could save them. 
Okay, so it looks like we're looking at seven shots from the first volley. Mitch did shift over a little bit. I don't know why exactly. Um, but it is what it is. He got, ooh, bad roll. Only two hits, uh, which is one wound only. So a very bad start. Mitch might not be able to close the game out this round. Panic is a pass as well. So, pfft. His crossbows have a little bit have been a little bit lackluster without the rerolls, I have to say. When he's been taking long range shots, his rolls have been a little cool. So it's, it's down to um, let me see. Everything's activated, barring these strong crows who are now taking shot into here. Uh, he controls only the swords. So he only gets he only gets rerolls. The rerolls are actually really important. Uh, he's rolling again. Oh, is he shooting Storm Crows instead of Hedge Knights? I think there was a miscommunication. I think he meant to shoot the Storm Crows. And that's a big difference. He killed six. Oh, this is a stand and shoot. Okay, he did shoot the Hedge Knights. Storm Crows are charging in, uh, which is cool because it's going to prevent them from shooting the Hedge Knights. Uh, Stormcrows fail their panic, uh, so they auto-pass because it's Daru's unit, and they are in to tie up the crossbows. Hilarious. Hilarious. Now, unfortunately, he's charging through the wood, which will give the crossbows plus one to the save as well. This is the often, like, case with Night's Watch crossbows. People put down woods to block shooting. I don't think he did that in this case, mind you. I think this was just in the deployment zone. But often other players put woods near the middle to try and block the shooting. The reality is you can never block your whole army with just one tree. So they end up shooting you anyway. You end up charging through the tree and giving the crossbows plus one to their save. Making them even harder to kill on top of shields and fires and conscripts and that kind of stuff. So I do feel the woods is a bit of a trap against crossbows. Um, okay, so crossbow, storm crows go in. They've got a pretty crap profile, four attacks hitting on fives. Dario does not do anything significant because he does not, does not have the bag. Um, does not have the bag yet, unfortunately, for the sun ring and extra dice. So just four dice hitting on fives. One hit so far. Probably one more. Two more, nice. Three hits, saving on fives. And I believe both shields have him played. Not that he's in danger right now, anyway. Uh, does he have crit? First of all, that's not even crit. They're not hitting on fours, are they? Are they not hitting on fives? They're hitting on fives. I think they misunderstood their attack profile. Um, so he took off three. Panic at even. Oh my god, crit fail. Stormcrow archers, you missed your calling. You were meant to charge into combat. I take it all back, Stormcrow archers. I take it all back. Okay, so that was unexpected. That was definitely a bit of incorrectness, though. I think this is a miss. There should be one more back. Um, and it is now pretty much all Mitch. Mitch has their actual activation. He's got the double activation here, a single activation here. What's significant? He's going to get an attack on the Stormcrows. They're going to swing with rerolls because of light. They have a pretty bad profile, I imagine. Now, the Watch Captain does bring him up to the second rank, so it's going to be four attacks hitting on fours of rerolls. Ooh, and they have light, which I think they means they roll maximum dice, right? Yes, they actually roll maximum dice. So six dice hitting on fours, five dice hitting on fours. So it would be six dice with the Watch Captain, right? You roll max dice, plus one for the Watch Captain. Oh, no, 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 no. The Watch Captain says you count as one extra rank than where you are. So I think it stays at five. Because essentially, the Watch Captain is doing the same thing as the card. You're rolling at your highest highest dice. Oh, no. Watch Captain is one higher rank. I'm confused. Anyway, it seems like they're going on five dice. Uh, no bags. So saving on fives. Pretty good roll, again, for the Storm Crows. Only two go down. Uh, and panic at even. Morale 7 is a pass. The neutral and morale has been pretty solid this game, gotta say. Been pretty good. Testing on 7s a lot. Okay, so it's back to um, Engineer. He's got his last activation. 
He's putting Varus there. That is going to outweigh the crossbows. So it looks like they're going to each gain two points. Unless Mitch can finish off these hedge knights. Now the hedge knights are not getting a heal and there's only five wounds left. So there is one more crossbow volley that's going in. That could end the game. Um, if it doesn't end the game, it'll be 9-6, which is really not that bad from Neutrals versus Night's Watch. Really not that bad from neutral, Neutrals versus Night's Watch. Okay, so what is happening here? It should just be the crossbows and the conscripts. Conscripts should probably push forward 10 to claim the quarter. They can f do a free heal onto the crossbows, I guess. And he should activate the Watch Captain first before his actual activation, because he can't activate the Watch Captain as his last activation. Oh. Okay, he's moving backwards. Um, he doesn't outpoint. Mm, okay, he's just playing safe. He's just playing safe. He could go try to go for the win now, but he'd rather give himself more options. The reality is, since he's going first next turn anyway, he can probably for the watch into these hedge knights and probably kill them with John anyhow. So he's playing a bit of a longer game. Um, and just playing a bit more of a safer game. Oh, he can actually kill these guys. Oh, you know what? Mitch is a bigger brain than me. Instead of shooting these dudes, he's shooting these dudes who have less wounds and a vulnerable token. So, big brain on Mitch. Uh, I got hyper-focused on the top right corner here. I forgot about these wounded guys back here. So, good good spotting on Mitch to um, see the more vulnerable unit. Uh, and it's pretty much it. They're going to march for 10, and we're going to see a shot. Now, there are four wounds left here, so this could be the end. If these seven shots can deal four wounds, which is not crazy, you know, four or five hits into uh, five plus saves with vulnerable tokens. Uh, conscripts are just coming forward. I guess, you know, they're going to act as a counter charge unit. This is typical of Mitch. I'm like the scared safe player. I would have ran away. Mitch is like, nah, bro. I'm gonna fight. I'm gonna fight with these guys. I ain't running. I ain't scared. Okay, the last shot. Can this be the end of the game anyway? Let's find out. If it is in the game, it'll be ten. Oh, it's going to be 10-5, I believe, because Mitch now owns this quarter regardless. Um, Engineer has 14 points, and this unit alone is 10, and this unit is 5. So yes. Um, oh no, he has this quarter too. No, no, no. Engineer's going to get 2. He's going to get the top 2 quarters where his NCUs are, but he's going to lose his quarter down here. So hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Mitch is only going to get one point from quarters. He'll be at eight, and a kill will put him to nine. So it is going on to the next round no matter what. I thought Mitch was going to get another... See, if he had moved here... No, no, no. It doesn't make it didn't make a difference. It... He got four hits. Vulnerable tokens being used. He's got to feel both. He does feel both. So, hilariously, if Mitch had moved here, he would have won. Right, because now he owns this anyway, and if this unit had moved here, he would have won the game. Because, yeah. <laughs> so if he had done the scaredy play, which is what I would have done, he would have just won. Because now he gets one for this quarter, he gets two, so it's going to be 9-6. Um, he might get a bigger lead as a result, honestly. Now that he's going first, he's probably going to kill this unit, claim this quarter with John, and then... He might even kill these crossbows over here too, or these Stormcrow archers. Yeah, so he could have won had he marched into this quarter. No big deal. You guys resurrect. 
Engineer is going to draw at least a card. Mitch will draw at least a card as well. You know what? I think Mitch should have just... Oh, no, I guess I guess what he was doing was he was just playing it safe. If he didn't kill these hedge knights, having the conscripts here... It's the same thing, right? Either you give your opponent a point or you get a point for yourself. It's kind of a wash. But by moving here, you give yourself a chance to win. All right, so looks like Engineer drew two cards. And Mitch, I think, drew two as well. So he's down to seven, he's down to eight. He's caught up quite a bit. All right, I haven't seen For the Watch yet. There's got to be a For the Watch. Oh, it's already there. There it is. For the Watch is being played. Uh, onto the swords. Uh, he will take a disorderly charge. Now, he's checking into... Uh, that's actually very smart. He could charge into here, kill this, surge into the flank, shoot this. He might ping pong and get two units here. He doesn't even really need rerolls to kill these guys, in my opinion. Eight attacks hitting on threes should be sufficient to kill these strong crows in the flank. So yeah, I think Mitch is going for the double, double, double kill. Uh, I think this is a little more than seven. So it's an eight, which is a two plus. Two plus with a reroll is still pretty darn good. And that will be the end of the game if he gets a kill, let <laughs> alone the double kill. Um, he is doing the aim on heal, I think. Yes, aim on heal on those guys, just in case it all goes wrong. And it should be a 2+. plus. No rerolls, though, unless he's got a second light. And again, he doesn't really need rerolls against four Stormcrows. This charge is good. Into the flank. Um, does he play light? Looks like he is reaching for a card, probably light. Uh, light that brings it down. Oh, it's sword. Okay, sword for the extra attack and the tokens. Um, this will seal the deal. If he gets four hits on his nine dice, he should probably kill those storm crows. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. So we got nine dice coming down, hitting on threes. Rerolling, no rerolls because he went through the uh, went to the corpse pile. So six hits that should be enough. Saving on sixes, no bag control since this is the first activation. Sixes and he's got a double token. Not that it matters. Sixes on six dice. He rolled good, but they're all dead. He rolled good, but they're all dead. Um, into a surge, into a flank shot. Eight shots in the flank with five wounds left. He probably won't kill them, but he will definitely cripple them. A failed panic could kill them. Yeah, what a nasty ping pong. Hunters are pretty disgusting. As gross as crossbows are, hunters have this amazing burst potential. He's re-rolling his dice for some reason, it looks like. Oh, the vulnerable. Why? Why bother? <laughs> Why bother? Weren't they already dead? They had sixes to save, I believe. There's no bags, right? Yeah, there's no bags. Alrighty, so we're going to see a surge into the flank. Um, what's the math say? You hit two to three times. They save half the time. So one out of three shots should do wounds. You've got eight shots. So you're going to do two and two-thirds wounds. So you shouldn't kill them with just your shots unless we got some crazy dice coming. Unless we got some crazy dice coming. There are five wounds left. You should do less than three wounds. But a panic could kill you. A panic could kill you. Okay, let's see eight shots into the flank, hitting on threes. We're expecting around five or six hits. That was about right. Five hits. Okay, there are five wounds left. <laughs> five wounds left. Five wounds left, saving on five. Fours. Ooh, 
bad roll. So he's down to one wound and panic at minus one. Panic at minus one, more than six. Panic at minus one, their leadership seven. So the odds are good to fail and that would be really devastating. At that point, they could probably speed through the last, oh, he took them off. What is happening there? I don't know why he just took them off. Did I miscount? Maybe I miscounted. Maybe they had four ones left. So I think they're just talking through the last bits of the game now. Yeah, I guess I miscounted. I guess they had four ones left. Um... Engineer could get two shots. He can take the bag and take their actual activation to try and kill conscripts and get another point. Will they play out the last turn? I'm sure they'll type to me if they want to just call it. Um, yeah, it's all about these Strong Chrome So he's taking the envelope to get rerolls. He can probably panic token. Oh, he can't panic token. Never mind. He's going to probably op activate the bag to shoot. Um, he could be in range. Oh, he's using the horse. Oh, so bold. So bold. He's like, see ya. I'm going to shoot these fools down here. So Mitch probably takes the bag, heals him up to eight, and then they're probably not going to die. Um, some dice were rolled just now. Oh, I think he used the last bear's token to deal hits for the sword. And Mitch has already won, so he doesn't mind rewinding the game to like take those extra hits. Um... I don't think he would have lost only two. Yes, that's correct. Yeah, yeah, that's right, that's right. He had five guys, that's right. He had two left after the failed panic. Um, Amon healed three, and he lost two more from the swords. All right, so he's just checking range. I mean, he could also just take Peter onto the bag and use the horse to back away and just close off all options. If he really wants to be thorough, Peter on the bag to deny the extra shot from John. Uh, from bronze, sorry, and then use uh, the horse to walk away with this this unit. Oopsies, and that would that would be the game. Peter onto bag, use the horse, walk away. Crown zap would be the last chance that engineer has to kill those guys at that point. Yeah, with all the hand waving, <laughs> I think they're just talking out the last the last couple of activations here. There's nothing relevant really. Um, these guys can't kill these crossbows because they'll need one turn to pivot. I mean, he might get two shots. He actually might get two shots. He's, oh, he's going for it, I think. They're going to actually try and kill these guys. I think that's fine. I think he's probably out of range, which is why he doesn't feel pressure to save those, um, those crossbows yet. And at any point, if he's out of range now, he can walk away at any point, right? If they move up with the horse, he can just walk away and probably be pretty safe. Uh, and this shot here will actually take off some ranks, flank, and corpse pile, um, and reduce their damage output anyway. All right, so seven dice on threes. He rolled a seven, I think. You know, I don't even remember what that, what that refers to. It's been... I'm a bit tired. <laughs> this game was a bit last second. So I'm a bit hazy on the details. Um, five hits on sixes. I did see a seven. I'm just trying to remember what that seven was for. Okay, so five guys go down, panic at minus two, uh, no bag control, so it's straight up minus two. 
this could be a lot of damage. And it was a lot of damage. It was seven wounds. Pretty good. Um, he's going to try and heal them up. I don't think he's going to go for a shot. He's barely out of range, maybe? A shift might get him into range, actually. And the shift... The shift won't get him out of range with these guys, I don't think. But he might be in range. Now, it's at an angle, and that's not quite accurate. You should still click on this attack button. Um, but again, because Mitch has already won, he might be just saying go for it. I think so. Okay, so he controls the bag and the envelope. So uh, the sun ring's not necessary, but the... Um, Envelope might be. So we have three hits. This could kill all three guys. That would be pretty great. Both shields have been played as well, I believe. So sixes followed by sixes. And you know what? That's nice to get a you know kill on the dreaded Night's Watch crosswoman. Of course, these ones will probably avenge their buddies and kill you anyway. So three saves on sixes, I believe. Sixes followed by sixes. There's one shield here, and I think another shield was just, was played earlier. Yeah, so both shields are gone. He did roll a six. Will Mitch ruin his knight by rerolling into a six? Oh my god. Okay, now there's still panic. <laughs> there's still panic. There's still a panic shot, you bad, bad man, Mitch. <laughs> panic at minus one. Will we see some justice? Will we see some justice? There is no justice, people. There is no justice. Where's the king's justice? There's no justice. All right, that was that was sadness. That was sadness. Okay, so game. Oh no, he still has a shot. He still has a shot. That was the shot off the bag. So Mitch might just try and drill him into the side, and he'll say, hey, if you survive this, you deserve that kill. If you survive this, you deserve that kill. I think I think that's what Mitch would do. Mitch, that, that feels like what Mitch would do. Mitch would take the aggressive shot and say, hey, if I roll bad and you roll good, then you deserve the kill on that last guy. Uh, he's not within short range for sure. And yeah, we'll see if uh, we'll see if he can finish him off. Pretty good odds. Does he get five hits? That's the question. Does he get five hits? He got six hits. Six hits saving on sixes. Needs to roll two sixes here. Six hits saving on sixes. Needs to roll two sixes. Rolled one. So they are dead, and that will be the game. So he's going to score a point. He's going to be at 12. Oh, what the heck is this? Block. Is it block? It's block. So he does control the envelope, which means he only takes uh, three wounds. And he passes the panic? He fails the panic. So they're dead anyway. My bad. Okay. So uh, it's 12. Uh, that is going to be one point more, and Mitch is going to score two, so it should be 14-7. You know what? It did kind of run away at the end, but in the beginning it was honestly kind of close. The neutrals were putting up a pretty good fight, keeping up the pace. Um, he kind of went for a violent, you know, start of the game anyway, so it was always going to be bloody. Um, yeah, so... I'm going to jump into Discord. I know that... Okay, I'm going to see if I can get my iPad out so that I don't ruin the audio. I know that previous streams, when I mute myself, I didn't realize that you guys can hear the Discord still. Um... Yeah, they're just wrapping up the last couple of moves. Oh, is he denying this quarter too, just to be super thorough? Wow, okay. A bit unnecessary. <laughs> You've already got the crushing. I don't think having more points makes a difference. I don't think. 
Uh, he will own... He's not even giving him a point. That's pretty harsh. Okay, I'm going to mute myself, folks, and I will jump into the Discord and see if they'd like to have a quick chat. All right, so we've got John and Mitch on the line. Uh, so the game is over, and um, I want to say that, you know, uh, obviously it, it came out to be a pretty crushing win for Mitch, but in the beginning, I was actually a little bit, uh, you know, nervous for Mitch because we saw some pretty uh, good saves on, on the hedge knights. We saw some good charges, some good shots. So it didn't seem um, like it was going to end up so one-sided. You kept a pretty even pace with them in the beginning. So let's start with uh, John. What were your thoughts on the game? How do you think things went? Were there any um, good moves that went by, bad moves that went by? Just out of curiosity, how, uh, what level of... Can I, can I use the term butts here? <laughs> Go ahead. I, I, don't know, I don't know what level of vulgarity I'm allowed to get to. So generally, from the start of the game, I was just rolling like I had horseshoes up my butt. Like I was making 10 up leaderships like they were like candy and everything. Uh, I don't think there was any amount of luck that I could have that would have allowed me to win at this point. Like, like if, 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 if luck could have helped me in this game, it would have. I, I think I, I got very outplayed, and I think there were only, like, a couple key places where I was, like, like on that last turn, leaving uh, with one guy in the unit. Oh, like, that was cruel. The sixes into sixes vulnerable roll was cruel, yeah. Yeah, that was... That, that was my last-ditch effort to be, like, maybe I can try and, like, reject enough points to make this a minor loss instead of a major loss by, like rolling very luckily and taking a unit and taking a board quarter to make it eight to ten but mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah no, i was I, that was a desperation play and that was not a play that would ever win me the game it was just a maybe i'll lose slightly less plus it'd be so satisfying to kill watch captain crossbows wouldn't it <laughs> i mean <laughs> cool all right well uh, mitch how about your thoughts um Tell me about what went well, what didn't go so well. You know, were you ever worried at a certain point? Uh, I was definitely worried in the beginning when uh, I started seeing those amazing saves and morale rolls. Um, and you know, like I when I was when I was in the center when I was here with John, and I retreated and I was expected to kill this unit twice and it did and kept living, and then John got killed in return. I was like okay this might not be as cut and dry as i you know as i might have hoped with with two watch captain crossbowmen on the field um which is as everybody knows an oppressive unit just completely unfun to play against um i think john was pretty great sport about it uh and you know what the fact that they're gonna get nerfed and with the watch captain not working on on crosswoman anymore is definitely a step in the right direction for the game cool um looking at the game the only thing that stood out to me was uh taiko did did you mean to save taiko to the end there um john or did you wish you had used him a bit earlier maybe at a certain point i think that Tyke, well, I, I didn't really hold on to Tycho overly long because I was more trying to keep the hedge knights that were up here in this quarter of the board being a threat. Mm -hmm. And I 
my goal there was to uh, make... He had his crossbowmen that were sitting about there. Uh, apologize for my horrific square. Uh, his conscripts that were there. Yes. And I had my archers standing over here. Yes. So what my goal was, was to charge into these conscripts... Mm-hmm. I needed to use Tycho to make these guys healthy enough to give enough attacks mm-hmm. that with precision and critical strike, I could charge and run through and get my uh, knights onto this side of the board. Yes. So that his crossbowmen that were over here holding onto here, I would have more on this board so I could score here, here, and then place uh, Varus in order to score this, yeah. keeping him only being able to score in the one corner. Right. Yeah, but I got hung up by, I can't remember if it was one or two wounds on those conscripts, and I was like, uh, panic, panic, panic. Yeah, Mitch, so I, Mitch, I, was, I was unhappy with where I used my Tycho, but in the way it was, I think I may, should have used him differently. Okay, sounds good. Uh, yeah, I think I think that was definitely a solid plan. I think on that attack, Mitch had both defensive cards. He had both shields and fire to counteract yeah. uh, some of the physical and panic damage, so... They were as tanky as they could be. I, uh, I'm not. I need to learn the decks better because I. Only, I was like, okay, I know he has the plus one block, but I did not know what the fire burns against just off the top of my head. So it was not part of my calculation that I was making there. Yeah, it was. It was a bit, a bit fortunate that he had both, I guess. But um, you know, I mean, he was cycling hard pretty well, uh, pretty hard. As I well. think it's more. I, I just need to sit down and learn all the decks just so that I'm not going to make. Silly mistakes like that. Fair, fair. Cool. Well, gentlemen, uh, the, the way you deployed, right on the line, it was action from the get-go. Lots of blood uh, occurred. And then, you know what? I got to say, uh, I was saying that, uh, John, you kept it very, very gritty. With your NCU placements onto the quarters, you, you, you were able to keep up very close until the last turn. So you kept it tight, uh, despite what I said earlier being a faction kind of mismatch. You got pretty much one of the top factions playing what's considered to be one of the, one of the lowest factions. You, you really stayed in there for most of the game. Mm-hmm. I, so thank you. I, 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 I'm not going to sit here and pretend that, like, oh, I lost because of Nightfall. I 100% believe that the better player in this game. Well, that's oh, very gracious. You. That's very gracious. Thanks so. Yeah, so thank you, gentlemen. And uh, now that round three is done, you get the whole week to chill out. And then uh, best of luck on your last round. Thank Thanks you. for hosting these games, and I'll see people later. Sounds good, folks. All right, have a good one. Bye now. Okay, so thank you for watching, folks. I hope you enjoyed that match. And uh, stay tuned. Uh, I don't think I will be able to stream... Uh, Steve's game. Steve's game is happening, I believe, tomorrow night at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Steve is playing Gamma for top table into the finals. So that should be a very exciting match. Targaryens versus Greyjoys. And the other final match will be Thranduil versus Wape. And I don't know when they're playing. I think they're playing... I think they're playing on Tuesday or Wednesday at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And if that's the case, I cannot stream that either. I've got plans. So I'm really sad that it doesn't seem like I'm going to be able to stream either of the top tables. Anyway, folks, I hope somebody else will be able to show the games off. Have a good one. We'll see you guys next time. Have a good night. Bye-bye.